If you're confused about the correct way to take your racket back on your forehand, then hopefully this video will help you a lot. And the first thing that you need to understand is that there is no correct way. There's no right or wrong way to do anything with any technique in tennis. There are two things that are basically important. You've got to be able to get to the ball in the first place for obvious reasons. And then you've got to be able to control the angle of the racket face at the moment of contact. So everything else is just about trying to increase the likelihood that you'll get that part right. And the preparation, the way that you take the racket back is going to be an important factor but there's just no right or wrong way to do it so i want to kind of explain the options to help you understand what you might need to focus on within your practice hopefully you find the video helpful if you do it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel before much appreciated if you could do that as well so as with everything else in tennis there's no right or wrong way it's finding the best version that works for you and obviously the contact point is the most important thing the way that you prepare take your racket back is just going to be a factor that contributes to the likelihood of you making a good clean contact Contact. and you want to think about it on a, a spectrum from simple through to complex and it works kind of the way the opposite of the the way that you would think complex means that it's really complicated to do in terms of the movement the timing and the coordination but if you have the movement and coordination in order to make it work it's the best thing that you can do it enables you to create the most power the most racket head speed the most spin and that's what professional tennis players do less complex so more simple has a lower top end so you're not going to be able to crush the ball at 105 miles an hour like Alcaraz does you can still hit a really good shot but you're not going to be able to hit the crazy sort of spin that Nadal does so it kind of runs from simple through to complex and you've got to find the appropriate level of difficulty for you so we'll think about the the kind of older more classical styles first the most simplified version that we can do is basically getting the racket behind the ball so if the ball's there if I get the racket behind the ball it's going to increase the likelihood that I make a good contact if I start with my racket further back now I've got more room so I can hit the ball harder because I've got more room to create that power neither's right neither's wrong I could then go back to there and again that gives me the ability to create more power I could take my racket higher and that would give me the ability to create more more power so I've gone from simple through to complex and they all work but it's about your timing it's about how you can make it work and then if we kind of look at the rest of the body yes I've got the racket going into a certain position but what really matters is the rest of the stuff that goes on so I'm if I was to have been starting from a ready position I would have done a unit turn my body is sideways my pelvis is sideways and regardless of where I have the racket there 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 or there I'm still starting it by driving through this hip so the important parts about the preparation split step setting up the right distance from the ball getting the pelvis turned getting the legs loaded and getting the upper body coiled so then whatever racket position we choose is going to be okay so now if we think about more modern styles it's still going to work on a spectrum the grips have changed a little bit these days i was just holding it with near a continental grip now we'll be thinking about easterns semi-westerns and maybe westerns so the contact point is going to be a little bit further in front than we had a moment ago with a more classical style grip but we still think about that same spectrum of difficulty from simple through to complex because i can have a semi-western grip and I can start in this position with my wrist laid back and I could just then hit through the ball and by doing that because of the position of my wrist and my arm behind the racket it now allows me to kind of get a little bit more behind the ball and also it makes it easier for me to create the spin so that's going to be more simple I could also start up here or over here somewhere with that same wrist laid back position and then I could swing from there so I've now got more create more space to create the speed and I can just swing through it and then if we move to kind of more ATP and next gen style forehands on the ATP forehand the racket tip tends to be pointing more upwards and the elbow tends to be a little bit closer to the body but some of them have got them quite far away from their body but now it's less simple because I've got to get, well, so we do the ATP, if I've got to go from this position into this position and into this position. 
Now the advantage of doing it is because my racket is starting higher, I've got gravity assisting in bringing it down. As I drive through my hip and my torso, my arm is gonna get pulled into external rotation and my forearm is gonna get pulled into supination and there's gonna be a stretch in the muscles, a stretch in the chest muscle as I go from there to there and that now because we've got the elastic in the muscle it can then allow me to throw the racket through much more quickly at the contact point and then it's very similar for the next gen but the next gen is just a little bit more complicated still because instead of going from there we're now going from there so I've got to go from there to there to there and this allows me to create more stretch and more racket head speed at the top end if I can make the timing work, but it's just a lot more complicated than we had a moment ago. So none of these are right or wrong, it's about finding what works for you. So the level of complexity that's gonna be right for you is based on your skill level, your level of hand-to-eye coordination. The greater your hand-to-eye coordination, the more complex it can be and the more it'll look like the pros. The less your hand-to-eye coordination, the more simplified it's gonna to need to be. So if you find that you've been trying some modern style and not being able to make it work, one thing that you can do is think about simplifying it, but what you can also do is train and improve your vision and your coordination using brain-based training. And by doing that, you can improve your hand-to-eye coordination and it will make you more skillful and that will make you more capable of using a higher level technique. If you'd like to learn how to use brain-based training to improve your hand-to-eye coordination, I'm holding a free live five-day neuro tennis challenge pretty soon. Uh, you get to spend five days with me for free and I teach you how to use brain-based training to become a more skillful player. So I'll place a link to it down in the description it's completely free so click on that link if you would like to learn more and potentially register because what i want to do now is talk about the thing that you might want to focus on in your practice at the moment to help you with this preparation because regardless of whether i use a classic style or some kind of modern style regardless of whether i'm hitting from a neutral stance or an open stance or whatever variation of stance the important things remain the same i have to react quickly so hopefully i'm doing a split step landing from the split step just after contact as I land, I should have been able to read the flight of the ball so that I can set up in the right position or try and move into the right position. But then that's the key part. The better the position I get set up in, the better the likelihood is that I'll be able to hit a good quality shot regardless of the style. So if I'm hitting a classical, I still might need to move backwards to allow the ball to drop. Yes, I can hit a classical forehand from up there. It's just harder for a lot of people. Maybe I wanna step in and I wanna take the ball on the rise. It's possible with any grip, but it's a little bit more tricky. So tennis is generally about you getting your body into the best position possible. You can't control where the ball's going, so you have to focus, you have to set up the most optimal position or in the most optimal position possible. And then regardless of whether I'm using a classic or regardless of whether I'm using a next gen, then I'm still gonna increase the likelihood that I'll be able to do it and get that good contact. And watching hundreds and hundreds of players send videos about their techniques, that's normally the biggest thing that holds players back is the actual movement, the reading of the ball and setting up in the right position. So in terms of your practice, that's probably the thing that you want to focus on and then just try and adjust your technique to see what happens. And of course, if you train your vision and it helps you to read the flight of the ball more effectively so that you can set up in positions, that can also be beneficial as well. Okay, hopefully if you uh, have found this useful, if you can give me that a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I've talked about, uh, leave them down in the comment section. Thanks for watching and one last reminder about that free workshop that's coming up. If you're serious about improving, it's awesome. I think you'll love it. Okay, catch you later.